Hey, I'm Chloe. Welcome to my channel. I'm a certified personal trainer and a pre and postnatal fitness specialist. And I just had my second baby via VBAC. And a lot of you asked me to share my birth story because perhaps you're, you know, you had a cesarean and you're going for a VBAC and you want to know how it went, what the risk factors were, what decisions I had to make. Um, so I'm making this video. And I don't want it to be super long because I don't think you need to know everything you know what I mean but um yeah here we go let's get started so just to give you a little background my first pregnancy was back in 2019 and I did everything literally by the book I read the books listened to the blogs listened to the podcasts read the blogs the only thing that I didn't really do was two things I wasn't flexible mentally with my birth plan and two I never really researched what would happen if I couldn't have a natural birth. So when I had an emergency C-section because my daughter's heart rate was dropping with every contraction after hours of labor, I literally had no idea what that meant. I knew obviously I was gonna go into surgery, they were gonna cut me open. I didn't know what the recovery was gonna be like. I didn't know how painful it was gonna be. I felt like I, you know, I did something wrong, I was disappointed, I was really hard on myself. So if you're pregnant and you have a birth plan, the first thing I'm gonna say is just be really, really open-minded and just keep in mind that it is a plan and also just research what a C-section looks like, research what a, a natural birth looks like, research, 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 look, research, 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 and have an open mind. So one of the first things we had to do is find out if I was actually a good contender to have a vaginal birth after cesarean. And so I met with my midwives and they went through my medical records with my birth with my first and seeing that the fetal heart rate was dropping with every contraction doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to be the case with this birth. And also it wasn't as though, um, you know, I pushed and I wasn't, the baby wasn't able to fit, like my pelvis wasn't opening up or that I was just feeling to progress. That left me to be a good contender. So then we had to talk about the risks. And there's quite a few risks. You know, there's a risk of a uterine rupture, and that's where basically the scar that's on your uterus opens up. There's a risk that you could labor again for hours and hours and then end up with another emergency cesarean. So those were some of the things that I had to consider. But for me, I really wanted to have a vaginal birth for a few reasons. I am a health and wellness professional. I love being able to like move my body. And after having a C-section, I wasn't able to for a long time. And I was in a lot of pain. They say that um, a natural birth as opposed to an emer emergency C-section is a more positive birth experience. My first birth, it wasn't a positive, like, I don't want to say that it wasn't a positive experience because obviously I'm really happy that my baby's here, but it was scary to go into a C-section and not know what was going to happen and all that stuff. So yeah, I also knew that I wanted to do it naturally because I had taken an epidural with my first. I didn't have a good experience with epidural, so I didn't want to do it again. And also. I didn't like the fact that when I did get the epidural, I couldn't feel my legs. And I also had to meet with an OB just in case I ended up in a cesarean um, so that she could actually go through my records as well because then it would obviously be a transfer of care. She once again assured me that, you know, I was a good contender for a VBAC and that there shouldn't be any complications and we can move forward. So when I told my midwives that I wanted to have a natural birth, one of the questions they asked me was, okay, so what's your plan for pain management? And I was like, well, I'm just gonna do it. And they were like, okay. So I knew based off of that response, I needed to do a little research. I talked to some mom friends, the ones that had a natural birth, had talked about hypnobirthing, so I looked into that. And that's a method of pain management for labor and delivery that uses visualization, breathing, and relaxation techniques. So I read a book, I watched a ton of videos on YouTube, and I felt really comfortable with the technique. Okay, so let's talk about how it went down. The day I went into labor, I went for a yoga class in the morning, I got a prenatal massage after that, and then I took a nap. And when I woke up, my water broke. And I wasn't feeling any contractions, I felt totally fine. 
um, I messaged my midwives, told them that my water broke, and they said, okay, let's see if the you know labor progresses naturally. I was like, sweet, this baby's coming today, it's early. I was 38 weeks and three days, or four, 38 weeks and five days. And um, I was excited. I started cleaning my house. I'm like, I wanna come home to a clean house. This is perfect, awesome. Um, but nothing was happening. That happened at around 4 p.m. At 9 p.m., I went to get a stretch and sweep to get things going. And at 11 p.m., things were going and I was getting contractions every couple minutes. So we went to the hospital, but then the contractions kind of like, were very irregular. Like I had them for like two minutes apart. And then it was like, five minutes apart, then it went back to three minutes apart, so it was taking some time. I love that I was able to walk around and just change up my positions because I wasn't taking the epidural. I was practicing my breathing techniques that I had learned from hypnobirthing and they were helping a lot. At about 3 a.m. I was now six centimeters dilated, so I was like, okay, great, it's, it's I'm progressing, this is awesome. But from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m., when she checked me again, I hadn't dilate any further. So for three hours, intense contractions, no further dilation. And I was gonna cry, literally was gonna cry. And I realized that even though I was still doing my hypnobirthing techniques, I was really starting to like clench my body. And they talk about that, like when you're kind of like bracing yourself, how it doesn't allow, it slows down the process basically. and. I immediately just kept saying with every contraction, like open up, release, open up, release. And I, you know, did a bunch of different positions. I would sit on the toilet, I would squat, I would lay down, I would walk, I would go on the, um, the ball. So I was switching it up and I was just really trying to relax. And after about an hour and a half, I had progressed to eight centimeters. So I was so thankful because she had said, because I wasn't progressing in those three hours, I was going to probably have to get induced. And remember, with VBAC induction, that increases your risks of a uterine rupture. And I was like, no, thank you. So it was really like a mind over matter situation. Like, I don't care how painful these contractions are. I need to just like, literally, I was like, relax, relax, <laughs> breathe, breathe. And so, you know, an hour and a half later, I was two centimeters further along. So I was at eight centimeters. I was very close and that was extremely promising. And then at about 7.45 AM, I started to get the urge to push. What I didn't know was that when you do start pushing, that I thought, I don't know why I thought this, but I thought the baby would like, excuse my diagram, come out progressively. But the baby like comes out, goes back in comes out, goes back in, sorry. Anyways, I was pushing for an hour and 15 minutes. It was so long. I did not expect that at all. I don't know why I didn't expect that, but I didn't expect it. And um, it was exhausting. And I was screaming at the top of my lungs. It was like everything that you see in the movies times 10, but at 9.01, he came out and I couldn't have been happier. I felt like I could do all things through Christ who strengthens me after that, honestly and truly. I was like, sign me up for a marathon. That was so intense, it was so tough, but our bodies are so resilient and so capable. If you're considering having a VBAC, I hope this gives you a little bit of information. I will say my recovery from my C-section is night and day. Right now, I'm five and a half weeks postpartum. I'm walking every single day. I feel great um, physically and mentally. Obviously, I was really sore after birth down there for a few weeks, but that's gone now. I wouldn't have traded this for the world. Honestly, I'm, I'm really happy with how it turned out. So that's my story. Thanks for watching.